Good morning. My name is Rob Martin, and I have the pleasure of serving as one of the pastors here at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church. If you're worshiping with us today for the first time, it is our joy and our pleasure to have you here in our midst. And if you're in the process of looking for a new church home, we hope that you will consider making St. Andrew that place. I call your attention to the announcements that you'll see scrolling behind me. If you haven't had a chance to watch all of them, they'll also play at the end of the service today. Uh, you may notice that I'm dressed a little more casually than I usually am. That's because uh, after announcements this morning, I am going to depart from your midst to go back to my house uh, to get ready for our open house today. After the service, you're invited to come by for refreshments and for good conversation and good food. We're located at 851 Rhine Court. Easy to get to. All you do is go out when you get to Camp Cardinal. You make a right. Then you take your next immediate right and your next right and come around the circle. And we're halfway around the circle on Ryan Court. Um, our gate on the side of the house will be open. Please feel free to walk in and join us in the backyard today. Next Sunday, uh, we had planned to have a barbecue outside, but those plans have changed. Uh, we're now going to have a meetup on Sunday over in Morrison Park. Um, there's a free concert happening uh, starting at 6.30. It's the Funk Daddies. I don't know how many of you follow the Funk Daddies, uh, but if that's not your style, uh, you're invited then at 8 o'clock uh, for Night Ranger. And I'm old enough to remember Night Ranger. Uh, just look for St. Andrew's folk sitting on blankets and, and join us for that very special uh, event. On Monday, which... Uh, Pastor Rob, <laughs> yeah. on that, on that meetup at the at S.T. Morrison Park, uh, look for the Ottermines. We're going to try to, you know... Camp out? Okay. Yeah. Good. So at that meetup, we'll be there. I know there'll be some other St. Andrew families there. So Good. we'd love to have us all gather together for the, the concert on Sunday. That'd Good. be great. Because that'll get you ready for... Fourth of July. Fourth of July. The parade that's <laughs> happening uh, on the Fourth of July. Uh, you're invited to come to the Otterbein's house. Uh, bring a lawn chair, but you'll have front row seats for the Coralville parade. If you're coming, please uh, park at the Hy-Vee and simply walk over um, to the house. So that's always a, a fun event. Yep. One last thing um, this morning that I want to note and honor. And that is, um, today is uh, Heather Wooden's last Sunday as Director of Children and Family Ministry. So I want to invite Heather to come up just for a moment. I promised her she would not have to say anything. Uh, but I do want you to remember that we're going to have a big celebration of her ministry um, on the 15th of July at Kent Park, beginning at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So Heather. I cannot believe this day has actually arrived. I think I've been in denial about that. Uh, but on behalf of the congregation and on behalf of the session, I want to thank you, deeply thank you, for all of your work and your witness uh, with our children and with our families over the years. You have an incredible, incredible heart. You have a deep gift for caring for those uh, both who need care and who don't, um, and you do an incredible job in our church with regard to local mission. So, huge hole to fill, but know that you leave this position loved, cared for, and cherished as part of this very special community. Thank you for all you have done for us. And now let us worship God with our hearts, with our minds, with even our very lives.
Good morning. Please rise and body your spirit as you are able and join in our call to gather. We each have a right to be here this morning, a right not based on our righteousness, but on God's free grace. Oh, give thanks to our God who is good, whose saving love endures forever. Let those who are redeemed by God declare it, rescued from trouble and gathered from many lands. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, give thanks to God who is gracious and good. join with me in our prayer of confession. Often, when we most need to be revived by God's grace, we find ourselves fearing God's judgment, doubting God's joy in us, worrying that God has turned away from us. Let us come to the one who heals us and calls each of us by name. When in our excesses we consume more than our share, while others go with basic needs unmet. Forgive us, merciful God, when we are blinded by our affluence and fail to reach out in care and concern. Forgive us, merciful God, when we are overwhelmed by desires to acquire and consume more than we need. Forgive us, merciful God, when possessions cloud our view of you and your gracious love. Forgive us, merciful God, this day and all days know that in God's love there is forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. Amen. As a visible sign of what it means to live together in the care and context of Christ's community, 
Let us extend Christ's peace and compassion to those around us. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. You may be seated. Our psalm reading this morning comes from Psalm 77, verses 1 through 2, and then continuing in 11 through 20. This can be found on page 467 of your pew Bible. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. Then continuing in verse 11. I will call to, my, to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is so great as our God. You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph, Salah. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I would like some children to join me, please. If you're here, you can come on up front. If you are at home, you can scooch a little bit closer. Hi. Good morning, everybody. So I am having fun this summer serving lunch at the Pheasant Ridge Neighborhood Center with a whole bunch of friends. Every day, Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock, we set up a big picnic at Pheasant Ridge. We have sandwiches and fruit and vegetables every day. We even had an ice cream party. It was really yummy. <clears throat> then we invite kids to eat with us. If I see kids outside, I say, hey, want some lunch? Come over here and get a sandwich and come and sit at our picnic table and eat with us. We have so much fun together. And I want to invite all of you to come to lunch, too. We'll share our picnic with you. And here at St. Andrew, we also invite people to the table, but it's a different kind of table. We have a communion table here. And we serve communion on the first Sunday of each month and at other special times during the year. Next week, next Sunday is July 3rd, so that means it's a communion Sunday. And we'll be serving communion and inviting people to come to the table. I found this book called At God's Table that explains what communion is all about. And I asked some friends to read it for us. So let's watch and let's listen to this story. You can look on the screen up there or behind us. Near the end of his life, Jesus gathered with the disciples for their last meal together before his death. This was a time to remember how God kept his promises. When we celebrate together, this meal reminds us that we are part of God's people everywhere. God loves us and keeps promises to us. Before we eat and drink, we thank God for the world God made and the hope God gives. We thank God for creating us, loving us, saving us, and helping us grow. After giving thanks, Jesus broke bread and said, this is my body. Then he poured a cup and said, this is my blood. 
Jesus shared the bread and cup with his friends, we also shared with Jesus' friends. God gives us an amazing gift. Even though we can't see Jesus with our eyes, he is uh, as real as the bread we taste and the cup we share. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. As we eat and drink, we remember Jesus and know he is with us. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we show what Jesus has done, is doing, and will do. As we share this feast, we look back to Jesus' life. We look around to see those Jesus loves, and we look forward to a time when Jesus' friends will eat together with God when Jesus comes again. Thank you, God, for these gifts. And all God's children said, Oh, no, no. Amen. 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 And one more time, all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. be seated. <clears throat> uh, 
I invite you now, if you'd like to continue reading along, to turn in the Pew Bibles to Luke chapter 9. Or you can read them on the screen as well. We're going to begin reading at verse 51. Here we read, When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for them for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, as we gather as your people and enjoy the fellowship of the people of God, as we join in prayer and praise, we... Ask that you would be present in our midst, that you would speak powerfully once again your word which brings life. And may we discover that life in following Jesus Christ, our Lord, and in whom we pray. Amen. I'm going to let our camera people know that I'm going to move. <laughs> On a Sunday like this, you have to walk around a bit because on this Sunday, we begin a, about a six-month period of time in the season of the church that we call ordinary time. And for Luke, he conceives of the normal path of life as a walk with Jesus, as a, as a journey on the road to Jerusalem. You know, one of the old ways of talking about the life of Christian faith was to call it the way. It was the path of life. It was a life in which we learn to follow Jesus day by day. Both of our passages today feature this life on the way, the way of the Lord, as it's proclaimed in Psalm 77. And in a slightly veiled way, in this particular translation, Jesus said, on the way, on the, ro- on the road, the same word is the word way, um, they were on the way to Jerusalem. And as we get ready today to celebrate the baptism of, of Wayland George Moraniac, um, I can't think of a, a better way to... to center our minds and our hearts than hearing these stories of what it means to be a part of the way of God. For in in baptism, as we pour the waters of baptism, and as we bring a child before God, it's important to remember that what we're doing is launching that child on the way of Jesus. Now, I know there are all kinds of emotions that that uh, are part of the life of a family when we bring a child to baptism. I mean, it is such a great celebration of the gift of life to bring a child to this, to this place in front of the entire community. I, I know as a parent um, what it means to bring a child to baptism. I know how your, your hearts are just filled with all of the hopes 
and dreams and desires that we have for our children when we come to this moment. Um, so many desires that we, that we have for our, our kids. You know, we, we want the best for our children. We want them to, to know joy. We want them to discover uh, meaning and purpose in their lives. We, we want them to know love. We hope that they'll live in a world that will be just and fair. We want them to grow up in a world in which all people are, are treasured, cherished. We, we want them to grow up in a world in which each voice matters. Um, we want them to be treated fairly, honored, cared for. We have so many hopes and, and dreams for a child. And that's why I think it's so crucial to, to hear these passages today. You know, in baptism, we, we put forth in a physical, visible way that our lives have been joined to Jesus Christ. We say with the words, after the water is poured and the child has water poured on their forehead, we, we mark them with the sign of the cross. And we say that this child is signed and sealed in baptism by the Holy Spirit to belong to Jesus Christ. There is in the sacrament put forth in a visible way the mystery of a life being joined to Christ. We say that that child is actually clothed with Christ. There is not a moment after that time that we can forget that that one is a person who is one with Jesus Christ. And yet we are apt to forget. We sometimes forget that our lives are held in the loving hand of God and in Jesus Christ. It is so easy in the world around us to forget that, that this door of baptism opens us into a world of beauty and, and spirit and justice and, and relationship. The, the traumas of life, the trials of life intrude and we're apt to forget. Notice that as Jesus, Jesus begins this journey with his disciples on the way to Jerusalem, a journey that has purpose and meaning in fulfillment of the promises of God, the stories of the people of God. It is, again, another reenactment of the great exodus of the people of God to enter life as the free people of God who worship their God, who meet their God in Jerusalem. And in reenacting this, this journey, this exodus to Jerusalem, Jesus, on the way, enters a city of the Samaritans. Now, you may know that the Samaritans were the hated and despised bastard cousins of the Jews that Jesus sought to lead. We may wonder at that. The Samaritans, the Samaritans were the children of the Jews who remained behind during the Assyrian exile when the leadership of the Jewish people were led off into exile and, and certain Jews were left behind and they intermixed with the people that the Assyrians brought into the land. And so they were a mixed race of Jewish people who worshipped the God of Israel. They were the Jews' kissing cousins. They worshipped the God of Israel, but they didn't do it the right way. They didn't worship God in Jerusalem. They worshiped God at Mount Gerizim. But they were people who called on the name of the God of Israel. And yet, there was such animosity, such anger, such, such hate between these two people that Jesus later on this same journey, will use the figure of the, of the Samaritan to shock the people of God into what it means to love 
and care in the story of the Good Samaritan. And so this story is a reminder that even though Jesus extends His call to follow Him to all people, to all the unwanted, to all those who are despised, to all the rejected, to all the outcast, to the leper and the lame, the blind, the woman and the Samaritan, the great invitation of our God goes out to all. Indeed, that invitation is a summons to come and learn the way of Jesus in the world, to discover in following Him that path that leads to justice and beauty and spirit and relationship. And so it's a reminder to the people of God not to seek the destruction of people who are not like us, who don't believe the same way that we do. You know, it wasn't the pagans of Roman times, those who worshipped Jupiter and Mars and, and Venus that the Jews most despised. It was their own religious cousins, the Samaritans, that they, they held the greatest anger and derision for. How can that be? And yet how often among the people of God today we see Christians people who see themselves as enlightened and, and progressive and knowing Christ in His fullness, how often we will hold in derision, look down upon, speak in anger towards people who call on the living God in Christ. Who seek to look down on Baptists and Roman Catholics and Lutherans just because they don't believe in exactly the same way we do, who aren't keeping up with the times. Jesus' invitation and call goes out to all the unwanted and the despised and the outcast, and he extends that welcome that, that Heather talked about to this table where all are welcome to come. And you and I, as we follow Jesus Christ, are called not to call for fire from on heaven to come down on all those people who disagree with us, but instead to look forward, to walk forward with Jesus and to bring to expression through our own lives and acts of love and welcome and care the way of Jesus and to trust, to trust that God and Christ can call all others as well. And so... Emily and Alex, as you raise Waylon in the faith, I, I hope that you will remind him that he is part of a great people of God that extends around the whole world and that God's welcome extends to people who don't seem at all like us, who seem very different from us, who we may disagree with and be angry with and, and wonder about, and, and yet those are brothers and sisters in the people of God. The second thing I want you to hear is Psalm 77 today. Psalm 77 begins with these words, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, that he may hear me in the day of my trouble. I seek the Lord in the night. My hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refused to, to be comforted. It is the cry of a soul in despair. One who wonders if God sees or hears or knows me anymore. It is the cry of someone who has known and loved God throughout their life, who has worshipped God in the temple, has known the Torah and the love of God, and yet because of life's circumstances reaches a point where they wonder if God's steadfast love remains has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? It is the cry of a soul in despair who wonders whether God is there anymore. 
Any of you who has ever sought to follow Jesus Christ in life, to, to live according to his promises, to, to share his love and compassion, I know that you've known moments like this where you wonder if God's steadfast love is gone, whether God sees you and knows you, whether God is present anymore. And so, Emily and Alex, I want you to remember this, that, that you let your son know that there will be moments like this where we, we doubt the presence of God and the love of God. But I hope you'll also hear in this psalm the answer to that cry which is a prompting by God's Spirit to remember the wondrous deeds of the Lord, to sing again in the night despair the, the songs of the people of God, and to remind ourselves of the promises of God. And so that means that this act of baptism invites you to tell those stories, to remind your child of those promises, to teach the songs, that will be the source of hope and life for your child. We need those. I hope you'll hear how this psalm ends once again. When all around us looks like a devastating storm, when the waters rise up in murderous chaos and the lightning flashes and the thunder rolls through, and it seems as if the very ground that we walk on will tremble and split. There the way is before us through the waters. Through the waters. To a place where we know the freedom and glory of the people of God. He says, your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters. You led your people like a flock by the people of Moses and Aaron. But notice, it says, your footsteps were not seen. And so in that moment, the psalmist experiences that great gift of grace that even in the midst of the storm, even when it looks like all is lost and our lives are forfeit and nothing can be good again, God is there, unseen, but active, leading us through the sea in a rescue that brings us to life, life and more life. And so that's what we do today. In this baptism, we join Wayland George to the life and person of Jesus Christ who will not ever forsake and, and fail Wayland, but instead will walk with him, oftentimes with footsteps unseen, but nevertheless into the life of the people of God, for all God's people around the world in a full welcome of love and grace. And all God's people said, Amen. So Emily and Alex and the Casper family, come on up for baptism this morning. And that's wonderful. I want to have, actually, as I see the children coming forward, any other children, if you want to come up and just gather here at the steps and draw closer and get a little bit closer to the baptism, I'd love to have you come up this morning. So come on up and join us here for the baptism if you'd like. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on up. <laughs> Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you 
Remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Hear also these words of Holy Scripture. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. And so obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. And so I invite you all today to remember with joy your own baptisms as we celebrate this sacrament this morning. And so, Cindy? On behalf of Session, I'd like to present Waylon George Moranic for the sacrament of baptism. <laughs> Great. So, Alex and Emily, do you desire that Waylon be baptized? Do you? Yes. And Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child? Do you? Great. And for all of you who are present here this morning, do you as members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Wayland by word and deed with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of his church? Do you? Yes. Great. Through baptism we enter a covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. And so, Alex and Emily, as God embraces you within this covenant, I ask you to reject sin and to profess your faith in Christ Jesus and to confess the faith of the church in which we baptize. So... Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Yeah. And do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, answer, I will with God's help. Great. All right. I hope it is clear that in the Christian life and on this journey along the way of Jesus, we don't walk alone. And Alex and Emily, along with their family, do not walk alone. You are a part of that life. And so this question for all of you, if I can find it once again. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. What I meant to say is we all together share a common faith, and so I'd like you to stand and share with us the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it on the screen at the back, as well as up here. Let us confess our common faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Now, if I could get some help from the children, sure. can you help me pour the water of baptism? If you all kind of help me here, grab the pitcher, and together let's, let's pour that water in. Ready? Here we go. You think that's enough water? All right, good. Now, I wanted to tell you, this, this water again, is making visible the very person and activity of God. 
Because God uses water to remind us of, of wonderful stories of what God has done. The stories of when God created all things and the waters of creation were in the heavens and on the earth and, and the waters watered the garden where Adam and Eve were. And we also are reminded by these waters of the waters of the Red Sea that we just talked about when the people of God went through the waters of the Red Sea on the way to the Promised Land. And then they remind us of the very water that Jesus was baptized in by his cousin John as an announcement that God's kingdom was coming. So this water is very important. It's a, remem- it's a, 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 reminder, it's a reminder of God's goodness, the gift of life, and God's rescue of all people. Yeah, wow, that's great. Yeah, wow, that's a good thing. Well, let's, let's have a prayer over this water, okay? Sure. Let's pray. Sure. I have something to tell you. I saw the ghost. It was through the wall. I saw it through the wall. You saw the Holy Ghost? Yeah. It was through the wall. Who's, who, who am I? Let's to, 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 to say, on the wall? Yeah. Great. On the roof? On the roof? The Spirit is over us. All right. Let's pray, okay? Lord, we give you thanks for your gift of water, for by it you nourish and sustain all living things. In the beginning of time, your Spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. And by the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ sets us free from sin and death and draws us into eternal life. So we thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of him who is cleansed by it. Raise him to new life and graft him to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him that he may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. All right. And so the big question here is, will Waylon let me hold him? <laughs> yeah, we can try. Waylon, you want to come to me? All right, good for you, buddy. Now, Waylon, this is probably the most stylish chapeau and, that I've ever seen in a baptism. But can I take off your hat? Okay, let me just hold that for a moment. I'm tempted to put it on. It's so stylish. (laughs) All right. This is the water that I'm going to put on your head. Okay? Can everybody see? Yeah. All right. Waylon George, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I now mark you with the sign of the cross, for in baptism you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Be one with Christ. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The life of following Christ is sometimes challenging and traumatic. <laughs> this is Waylon George. I'm going <laughs> to... I hope that you will get to know Waylon over the years to introduce yourself to him, to know him by name, to, to meet his cousins, and to cherish them. Um, I know that God is already beginning to pour gifts uh, into his life and the life of his family, and, and we are a people who will be blessed by those gifts. Um, but we'll also be the family that teach Waylon the stories of the people of God who will bless him, who will encourage him along the way, who will comfort him when he is upset um, and encourage him when he is discouraged. And so I, I invite you to that life.
Um, let's close with prayer. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this gift of baptism, and we ask your blessing upon Waylon and his family. May he discover joy along the way and the path of Christ our Lord, in whom we pray. Amen. And I'm going to give to Alex and Emily this uh, milestone, the faith milestone for his baptism in the bowl that he can keep this milestone and future milestones uh, that will be along his path in, in the days to come. So, great. And here's your certificate of baptism, which um, we'll sign afterwards, okay? All right. All right. Well, again, let's welcome Waylon and his, and his family today. Okay. Okay. All right. You make it good. We discover life after baptism as discovering how, with all of ourselves, all of our our lives, we can make a response to God and a response to God's grace. That's exactly what this time of offering is. It's through a visible expression of the giving of our finances and our talents and time uh, to make an appropriate response to God's grace. And so I invite you now to bring your tithes and offerings today.
You may be seated. As we walk the way of Christ, we are a praying people who cry out to our God. So let us join our hearts together in prayer. Eternal God, we give you praise and thanks for all your good gifts to us, for the gift of life and family and community. We thank you for your great invitation that goes out to all people, to the unwanted and the despised, the broken and the despairing. We are grateful that your word finds us in our places of need, that you reach out to the lost and the hurting, and that you create a place for us in the people of God. And so, Lord, may we respond to your summons, may we answer your call by bringing to expression in our own lives the grace that we have experienced through Christ our Lord. And may we, may we be a people who go forth to proclaim your good news. And you're welcome to all people. May our, may our feet be swift to carry the good news to the community around us that you are a God of, of justice, a God of love and compassion. May we find courage to stand up against those who speak words of hate, of rejection, of division. Lord, we ask that you would give us strength for our life together where there is a need for healing. Bring your spirit for reconciliation, for new life, for wholeness. Today, Lord, we lift up to you Jack Prawl, We've received word that Jack, while in Denver with Nancy to visit his son, fell and broke his ankle and fibula and has had two surgeries to begin the healing of his leg. And so we pray that you will watch over him in the many weeks to come as he experiences rehabilitation and recovery from this injury. Give him encouragement when he grows discouraged by the progress of his healing, and may you give him patience as he heals. May he know the love of his Christian family around him. We continue to pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. May they know the hope of your resurrection life. May we discover with each new day new ways to share the love and the mission of Christ with the world. We're grateful for our opportunity to share food with our community through daily lunches and through our food distribution. And we pray that our partner families would experience your grace and, and love through these acts. We thank you again for the faithful ministry of Heather Wooden in our midst, for her love for our children and families, for her heart to share the grace of Jesus Christ with our community. Lord, go with us in the days ahead. May we trust you to lead us in your way. May we grow confident in your promises. May we, may we be willing to extend our grace to all whom we meet. In this day of division, in which we find ourselves at odds with our neighbors across the political spectrum, Lord, may we be a people who learn to respect and honor those with whom we differ. May we work together to arrive at solutions and answers that lead to a greater wholeness and peace for our communities. Grant us your grace, we pray. And so, Lord, as we begin to live out the life of baptism, we ask that you would nurture and guide us like a father and mother. We pray for the families of this congregation and for all Christian families everywhere. Give them strength to honor you in their homes and to love and serve each other. 
Help all who have been baptized in your name to live in peace and unity as sisters and brothers in the household of the people of God and to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And now, Lord, that we may be the people of God on the way of Jesus Christ, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. though unseen, is present and there in power and grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen.